Hey, this is Doug Field along with my co-host Ron Bachman, and welcome back to uh, the second segment of Healthcare Consumers and Radio. And we have joining us today from uh, Medligo, which is uh, uh, provides a virtual health insurance card. Uh, David Brooks, the CEO. David, good morning. Good morning. Hey, I'm very interested, uh, both Ron and I both, at learning more about what you're doing. Give uh, our audience a little background on uh, Medligo and, and what you're doing with this app, please. Yeah, sure. Um, well, we, uh, you know, we're really focused on trying to create um, greater transparency. Uh, I know it's a big, a big issue across the industry. I think um, our particular focus is really trying to provide more um, price transparency at the point of care so that... Um, at the time of service or the time a patient goes in to visit a doctor, there's more transparency up front about what is expected to happen during the visit and sort of based on that expectation what the, those costs are going to be, both in terms of um, what the patient's insurance is going to pay and, and how much responsibility they're going to have. Mm-hmm. Are you focused a lot on uh, uh, the, the physician to get this uh, distributed or the consumers or employers? What's your, what's your real focus well, I mean, that's, that's a great question because, I mean, we're really, um, I think sort of kind of big picture, we're really, we're really interested in creating tools to help um, consumers engage with mm-hmm. their health care. Um, we, we particularly think that the initial focus really um, for most people is going to be around the issues of cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do, we are sort of dabbling in terms of putting some, um, a mobile application out um, right now that has some value for consumers on a standalone basis. But our kind of assumptions from the beginning are that, Really, we need to engage um, providers with the solution and provide value both to providers and their patients. And in the process, um, really feel like you know, kind of the distribution would really kind of be more, um, you know, coming from the provider side. Mm-hmm. Uh, David, it's Ron Bachman. How does a provider get their data in? Let's say somebody wants to promote a specific cost for a service or their office visit, or they want to do a special on some particular exam. Um, you know, they might go out with a Groupon today, for example, but how, how do they get into your data so that a, a patient uh, out there looking for a service uh, could could access that uh, transparent cost? Um, I mean, it's, it's a great question. I mean, I think the, the truth is that um, there's obviously some limitations um, from a professional ethical standpoint about providers um, being able to even offer discounts and things of that nature. Um, I think that's going to change. You know, I mean, I think it's really part of a greater movement towards kind of the retailization of, of health care. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some inevitability towards that. And um, at, that, at that point, you know, I think when that becomes sort of a viable option in the industry, we'll definitely, you know, I think our platform would be a great platform to disseminate that information to patients. Right now we're sort of working within the constraints of the system as it is, which means that we have to work with the providers to understand what their particular fee schedules are with their individual payers, mm-hmm. and um, we build in some logic to help them understand and do some sort of predictive analysis for different patients that when the patients come in, knowing kind of what the reason for that visit is, we have a pretty good indication of, you know, exactly what would be billed um, as part of a bundle of um, kind of billing codes and also how that would be processed and paid um, by the specific um, insurance company in question. So we work pretty hard to sort of make a system, you know, working within the constraints that we have today. But like you said, I think there's, there's no doubt that we're moving towards a point where I think most um, procedures and visits that happen in the ambulatory market, I think within the next couple of years, we're going to be moving more towards kind of open, fixed, published prices, at which time, you know, I think we can you know, definitely facilitate getting that information to consumers. So is the data uh, national? Are you focused in a particular region of the country? Uh, can anybody access this? Are you working through employers and, and uh, you know, their particular employee population um, that's, uh, you know, able to access this for the particular coverage that an employer has? Yeah, so we have the ability to sort of price stuff nationally, but to do it at a fairly generic level. Um, if we do it nationally, we can give people a general sense of what um, sort of a what to expect in terms of what a general market price would be. But that's mm-hmm. very it's very general information for us to be able to price it like specifically. We have to work directly with um, the providers mm-hmm. to understand like what payers you know they work with and what those contracted rates are. Um, and, again, there's a lot of value to the providers to be able to provide that information to their patients. Um, it's, you know, I mean, we sort of phrase it as, or the way we view it is, it's kind of 
Um, you know, it's, there's two problems that are kind of on opposite sides of the coin. Um, from a consumer's perspective, it's pretty much un, you know, unacceptable to go in to see a doctor and not have any idea what, what's going to happen and, and certainly what it's going to cost you, but you know, to be financially on the hook for that. Um, from, the, um, from the provider's perspective, um, the fact that they can't communicate that to the patients makes it very difficult for them to sort of manage their, um, you know, manage their financials. It's a really challenging problem for providers. So we're really addressing that. In terms of provi- um, employers, we are we're having some a number of conversations with some employers, particularly larger self-funded mm-hmm. employers who have a strong interest from sort of end to end to, in terms of how they manage costs and how they direct their employees to most efficient providers. So I think there's definitely some strong possibilities, but we're pretty early in the discussions with employers at this point. Is this live now, David? Well, our, we just released our mobile um, app, our mobile application is really going to for the consumer and for the patient. And right now, um, it's really a, as a, um, the application is really um, sort of on a standalone basis, meaning it's not other than the fact that we can um, get benefits information for about 80 to 85 percent mm-hmm. of individuals directly from their insurance companies. Um, the the application is kind of on a standalone, so it's not interfacing directly to any um, providers just yet. Okay. And we're so there's a provider component to the software which we're in early testing with. Okay, what's your pricing uh, and business model, David? Well, there in terms of the software, there's no cost um, to the end consumer or patient. Um, the the value really a lot of the sort of um, business value goes directly to providers who. Again, as I said, are really pretty challenged right now to, to manage mm-hmm. patient collections. So, we're um, developing a solution in a way that um, providers would pay essentially um, a, a very nominal amount on a transactional basis. Um, but even there, um, we have good reason to believe that for the vast majority of providers, um, we're going to be able to save them money and in, in, in their um, processing fees that they currently pay by using a more efficient system. So. Um, it's kind of a double value prop for the um, providers, which is we you know, help them collect money um, at the time of service, but we're also kind of saving them money on transactional fees. Your, um, your mobile app looked pretty interesting because, as I think I understood it, uh, you allow the uh, end user, the patient, to uh, pay for the service with a credit card or come out of their uh, you know, HSA account um, to be able to not only find price but to pay for the process. Is that up and running and active at this point? Well, that, that, that's the, that requires um, the provider to be using sort of the other side of the software. Mm-hmm. So right now, you know, just on its own, we're doing some pretty interesting things in terms of just even simple things like being able to virtualize your, your insurance card. A lot of people don't like carrying their insurance cards right. around. And so being able to take an image and have that information, not just the image, but um, the information on the insurance company um, in a digital format in a way that we can electronically and securely share, um, like with, with your provider or with, you know, if it's for your child and they go to, um, you know, a, a, a camp for the summer and you need to send them an insurance card, you can do that in a secure format gotcha. um, and do it digitally. Um, and we also have a provider directory that's, in, you know, in, embedded in the application to really help um, easily find um, the most important providers on a kind of, you know, based on a sort of geolocation search. Well, you know, a lot of doctors are really moving towards this concierge service. It's really more of a, of a you know, a non-insurance payment. Um, and maybe even some services, uh, um, you know, mobile medicine, going to somebody's house and they're willing to pay, you know, out cash or they're willing to pay out of their uh, health savings accounts. Is this mobile app uh, something that might really help um, uh, facilitate that kind of a change in medical practice? Um, so, I mean, that's a great question. So, and it really kind of strikes at our sort of longer-term vision about what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, you know, there's a lot of solutions out there and a lot of companies who are trying to address this from, um, you know, s- solutions like HealthTap mm-hmm. um, that are trying to connect consumers to a network of providers to the task, you know, relatively smaller kind of um, questions about health and get advice. Mm-hmm. Um, where, well, where the real challenge has always been, like how, you know, can you get consumers to participate? Do consumers care enough about their health care to actually take the step to download an app and, you know, start the process of being a little mm-hmm. bit more proactive? Um, and when, if you're able to do that, then, you know, the next set of challenges gets to, like, how do you connect providers? How do you connect everybody into, 
you know, on sort of a communication platform so mm -hmm. that you can start moving um, information around and to do it securely, which is obviously critical for, right. for healthcare. Um, so that's really at the core of what we're kind of shooting for is like to get, provide compelling reasons that solve pain points and problems now that people care about with a long-term vision that if we get people on, you know, on the platform, um, that going forward, there's many types of things we can do. You know, we can move payment information. We can, you know, we can move um, pricing information, and mm -hmm. that's really just the beginning of it. I mean, if you can connect kind of the dots, um, you can definitely use it as a platform to support more complete and more um, new models of care. So I think yes, absolutely, we're very interested in that. I think um, the first step, though, is you know, can we find, you know, can we you know, solve those sh shorter t term pain points that get people interested and even get on the platform. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting, David. That, uh, we've got about a minute to go. Um, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to leave our audience with a couple takeaways and how they can connect with you as well. Yeah, um, well, I guess the first is, you know, we're, we're not really making a huge push to, to consumers with our mobile app um, right now just because we just put it out there. We, um, you know, we think that we're solving some, some interesting kind of problems, but the goal is really to continue to evolve it, so definitely encourage anybody who's on the front end of this to, to take a look at it and give us feedback, tell us how we can make it better, um, and, and also just in general, you know, ask questions, get involved, understand what your benefits are, and um, get ready because we're, you know, as consumers in, in this industry, we're, we're, gonna, we're taking on a whole lot more responsibility, um, and, you know, hopefully our solution as well as I'm sure there's a number of other great tools um, are coming onto the market and to help manage the process. So if you get a chance, stop by our website at medl.io and um, check, out, check out what we're doing. And, you know, if you have feedback, please let us know. Well, David, listen, I uh, really appreciate you uh, joining us today. And uh, uh, you've got an interesting, interesting innovation that we want to stay abreast of. So uh, you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you again sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, to Take our care. audience, stay tuned for the next segment of Healthcare Consumers and Radio.